All right, everyone, we're going to be uh, making a uh, animated sprite and creating the movement code for it. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Uh, starting off, let's just right click on our root node, add a child. Uh, first thing we'll do is because this is a player, we'll add a character body 2D. We'll hit create, right click, add a child node to that. This time we'll search for a collision node. We'll use collision shape 2D. Uh, our shape needs, uh, our collision needs a shape, so on the inspector on the right hand side, just click on empty, and you can choose rectangle or circle, um, and then if you need to make adjustments, you just click the little points, and you can make it bigger or smaller, do whatever you need. Uh, I'm going to right click on the character, add a camera 2D node, uh, and then I'm going to set the camera zoom in the inspector to be 2.5 in the X and the Y. Uh, I'm then going to right click on the character, add a sprite, and I'm going to use the animated sprite 2D node. And that's because I'm using a uh, sprite sheet. So I'll hit create there. And then in the right hand side inspector, we'll hit the animation drop down, click on empty, do new sprite frames, and then for some reason you have to click on it twice to actually get it to open. Uh, then you can just click on default, and it'll let you rename it. I'll call that idle. Uh, and then from your file system, you just drag the images that you got in, or if you have a sprite sheet, you just click this little sprite sheet icon here. It brings up the import wizard, and then you choose your animation. You set your size. These are 100 by 100. Uh, and then you select uh, the frames that you want. So you can just click and drag, or you can hit select all, and then add the frames to the scene. Uh, and then if I hit play, you can see the animation's working. You can even increase the FPS of the animation. If I hit F6 to play the scene, it's not working though. Uh, that's because we need to control that behavior through the um, through the script. You can also set it uh, in the inspector as well. I think you can play off the loop in one shot, but we'll want to do it through code. Uh, we'll right click on the character body, we'll attach a script. Uh, you can choose a name, choose a location, or just hit create, doesn't matter. Uh, and then we're working with our basic script here. So I think starting off, we'll create a function this is a predefined Godot function, which is called ready. Um, so just kind of trigger it like that. Um, and then in the, I guess the, the first item, we'll want to reference the component and then hit play off of it. So the way you can do that is you can do the dollar sign and then call the uh, component name, which is animated sprite 2D, hit play, and you can choose idle. Uh, we're going to be having to do this a lot though, so I'm going to make a reference to it. So at the top, I can do on ready, define a variable. I'll call it sprite to make it easy. I'll set that equal to and drag out the component. And then I have to list the component type. If you just hover over it, it'll tell you the type at the bottom. It's animated sprite 2D. Probably could have guessed that. So you just basically type whatever the component type is and that'll actually uh, load fine. So now instead of this long thing, you can just type in whatever name you gave it. Um, that makes it a little bit easier. Either way is fine though. Uh, you hit F6 and now we're playing our scene and you notice we are idling, but we can't move around. So let's go ahead and set up the movement code. Uh, to set up movement, we need to be able to accept input. So you'll wanna to come to your project settings uh, right here. Under input mappings, uh, we're gonna wanna create uh, these mappings here. So you can add a mapping, um, call it test. So give it whatever name you want, hit add. And then in the actual section, you can hit the uh, plus button and then you can type you know, a letter or character or whatever you want, whatever you want it to be. And you click okay and then it adds it in there. Um, you'll wanna do that for left, right, up and down. Uh, and if you want to follow along with me with the code I'm using, you'll want to use uh, the exact same verbiage. Um, and I believe casing matters, so left, right, up, and down, all lowercase. And then I assign the AD uh, WS keys to those. You can also use a controller if you prefer using controller as well. And you can map multiple um, buttons to a singular input. Um, so if you want to have controller and keyboard, you can do that as well. Once you have that all done, you just hit close. Uh, we're going to go back to the actual code. Um, you have to do this in a function that's going to run every frame or every tick. Um, 
So there's two that I can think of. There's the uh, process one, but there's also a, I'm gonna use the physics one, uh, this one right here. Uh, and then from there we need, we're gonna be doing uh, vector math. Um, for that we need a direction and a velocity. Uh, velocity is a built-in uh, component of Godot, so we only need to define the direction variable. So at the top, we'll define direction. We'll set it as a vector two, and then we'll set it to zero. So vector two, uh, zero, zero. You don't actually have to define it if you don't want to. And if you don't want to TypeScript it, you can just simply call direction and that'll work fine. Um, oh, because I uh, will say direction two. Uh, or you can actually define it like this as well. So any of these classifications work just fine. If you do it this way with the TypeScript, your IntelliSense will be a little bit more aggressive with you and let you know when you make a mistake later on. So that's typically why I like to do it. Um, but all right, um, so we'll go ahead and we are going to set direction equal to the input. And we're going to use the method get vector. And this does have a particular order. If you do, do it in the correct order, your character is going to move funky. Uh, so the first one is left. Oops. And then we'll do a comma. Second one is going to be right. And the third one is going to be up. And last one is down. I think I have an extra space here. So left, right, up, down. Um, and then if you hold control, click on this, it'll tell you why. It takes the negative x first, then the positive x, and then the negative y, and then the positive y. So that's why it's like that. Uh, and then with that, we can just simply come into a print call direction. You can actually see what this thing is doing. Uh, you can see in our um, our uh, logs here, um, we're running at zero, zero. If I push W to go up, it puts me at negative one in the Y. If I push down, it's a positive one, which I feel like that's a reverse for most other engines I worked in. Uh, but if I hit A, that's negative one in the X. And if I hit D, that's positive one in the X going right. Uh, so that's how I'm used to, at least for that portion. Um, so that's looking good. So we got a direction. Um, let's go ahead and update our velocity. So we can call into velocity, which is kind of built into the, uh, I think that comes along with the character body. So that's, a, or actually no, I think it's, you know, in other components too. So you won't have to define that anywhere. It's already in, uh, from what I can tell in this engine but we will want to set it equal to the direction times the scalar. We can use uh, speed as our scalar. So we need to define that. We'll come into speed. I'm going to type cast it as a float, and then I'm going to set it equal to maybe 50.0. Um, and that should hopefully compile. So now if I hit, uh, whoops, I'm going to hit F6, play my current scene, and we can see that it is currently not moving. And that's because we haven't actually called uh, the method to move the character. Um, there's a few ways you can do it. You can do tween, uh, you can do move to, you can set the posi position directly, you can call move and slide, uh, you can call move and collide, and there's probably a few more out there. Uh, move and collide, move and slide will only work on a character body or a rigid body. Uh, but the other ones I think work in any situation. Um, it's just sometimes you're, if you're doing move to, your velocity is not changing. So if you want to change sprite frames based on velocity, which is helpful sometimes, you won't be able to do that. Uh, so you have to get more creative on how you change your sprites basically. It could still be done though. Um, but I'm gonna call move and collide. And then I'm gonna pass in the new velocity and I'm gonna times that by the tick rate, which is delta. Now I should be able to move. It's not gonna animate right, but you can see my characters moving around. All right, so let's actually get the, 
sprite animating and looking a little bit better. Uh, let's go back to our 2D view. Select the um, animated sprite here. I'm gonna create a new animation. So with the plus sign here. And we'll just call this maybe walk. Import sprite sheet and we'll do walk. Uh, this sprite sheet I got from itch.io is 100 by 100. I'll just hit select all, add to frames, good to go. And animating in this Godot engine is actually fantastic. This is a lot more difficult than uh, I feel like Unreal Engine and some of the other ones, but uh, this is pretty good. Go back to scripts. Um, so let's make it simple. We'll just do an if conditional check. So we'll do if the direction is, actually sorry, direction has an X and a Y. If we're checking the left and right, we only need to check the X, right? So direction dot X is greater than zero. Uh, we also want to check if the sprite is flipped. So we're not flipping it multiple times. So we'll come into another check and we'll say is the sprite dot flip H, which is the horizontal. Uh, if that is true, um, then the sprite dot flip H will set equal to false. And then we'll come out of the if check, so we'll go back, uh, and then we'll set the sprite to play uh, the walk animation. And then we're gonna back out again and go back to that top if statement, and we're gonna come into an else if, and the way they do that is elif, uh, I guess shorthand. Uh, we could say the velocity uh, dot x is less than zero uh, and this code is going to have some issues but we'll go over that in a second um, then we'll come into our if check uh, if the sprite dot flip h and we want this to say not so i think you can actually come into not i think that works does it let me do that no it doesn't um, not equal I forget uh, the other way I do it is I just add an exclamation mark to the front of it which basically is the inverse so if it's not uh, true then we will set the um, sprite dot flip h to true uh, and then we're gonna come out of this if statement so we'll back out and we'll set the sprite dot play also the walk and this just makes sure that the sprites play in and face in the right direction. Um, and then if we're not doing any of these, we'll back out and come into the top row. So we're doing if, if else, and now we're coming into the else statement. Uh, we could just simply say sprite.play idle. That's gonna have an issue, but you'll notice I can move right, I can move left, but I can't move up or down. And the main fault here is I just don't have a sprite sheet that has an up and a down. So um, we're gonna cheat, I guess. Um, we're gonna come to this uh, top statement up here. We'll come into an or, which is just the backslash using the shift. So it's a little pipe, so you just pipe it twice. You can say direction dot y, which is the up and down, uh, is greater than zero. And then on the else if, we can pipe into an or and we can say the direction dot y is less than zero. This is still gonna have an issue, but it will get us closer. So now if I push up, I go up and I'm animating, and that looks a little bit better, and then I can go left and right. The issue comes right like here, where I can go uh, down and to the left and up and to the right, and I can be facing the wrong direction. So the way we can account for that is on the first conditional check, and honestly, this, a better fix is just get the correct sprite uh, movement so you don't even have to worry about it, or the frame. Uh, but we can come into a and, so two ampersands. I could say not equal to the direction dot x less than zero. And that should account for all those scenarios where it was shifting weird. So now it's still moving right, and I can move diagonal. So it looks a little wonky, like when I go up, it always 
faces left, and when I go down, it always faces right. Technically invert that, I guess, if you wanted, but it's never gonna be like perfect, but there you go. That's basically a sprite moving around on your screen and animating and going through uh, all the different states just on your scripting. So hope you found this somewhat useful and helpful. Happy coding.